the Orlando Magic fail to make any offense happen in game one as they fall to the Cleveland Cavaliers here at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Why we're not surprised by this? Because this is what we expected to happen. How the Magic get back for game two and a whole lot more on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is April 20th. It might be April 21st by the time you listen to this. My name is Philip Rossman-Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over, over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, find me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. Coming to you from Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse after the Orlando Magic fall to the Cleveland Cavaliers 97-83. to On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we'll break down why this is exactly what we expected to happen in a lot of ways, how the Magic showed their fight, and why this series is going to continue to be a series. And we'll talk a little bit, uh, I may say this for tomorrow, but we'll talk a little bit about some of the rotation decisions that Jamal Mosley is making and why things might need to change as we move forward in this series. We're going to get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. You can check out our friends at Locked On Cavs for their perspective on today's game. Again, find that wherever you download podcasts, Lock, the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by FanDuel. To make every moment more right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. I hope I've been prepping you for for what we're going what we were going to see in the playoffs and and and, and prepping you for exactly what we were expecting. Uh, when we got to this moment, to this stage, the one right behind me, if you're watching on YouTube. I told you, we told you that the Magic's offense was going to be rough, that they didn't have enough shooters or enough shooters that defenses respect, that Paolo Bancaro was going to see a wall of two, three, maybe even four players trying to keep him out of the paint, that teams are going to be able to hone in specifically on what this Magic team does and what this Magic team is good at to put themselves in a position to win. With, with the playoff preparation, with the time you have to prepare, you get to dig into the details. You're not worried about that back-to-back -back or anything else. This is truly about will and whether you can execute your stuff well enough to win. Now, the Orlando Magic did not play some god-awful game here. Uh, we'll, get to, we'll get to the fight that they showed here. But everything that we've known about this Magic team, Every weakness that we've known, everything that would tell us that, yes, this Magic team is good. They are a quality team, but they're not a championship team. And they're not a team that maybe is built for the playoffs in this way because they don't have an offense. <laughs> Their offense is really rough. They will give up uh, opportunities. They will give up scores. They will, gi or they will give up opportunities to score. They will leave points on the board. Every weakness that we have seen and known about this Magic team on the offensive end was going to get exposed in the playoffs. And, and that's frankly what this team needs. They need to be exposed a little bit. They need to have these mistakes laid bare for everyone to see. They needed this. But to see it in full force in, in a series that we believe the Magic can win, and the Magic can still win it. Don't, don't, this is not the end of the road by any stretch of the imagination. But every weakness that we knew existed about this Magic team was on full display in Game 1. The Cleveland Cavaliers were able to take out the Magic uh, and take the Magic out of the things they like to do offensively. They made everything extremely difficult. And that's why the Magic are sitting here down 0-1 in the series, and that's why we know that this roster, as presently constructed, is not the championship roster for this Magic team. If we're going to begin thinking about the big picture and thinking about the play, thinking about the future of this franchise, we know they need shooting. We know they need floor spacers to just make this be a little bit of a threat. It doesn't even have to be a ton, as, as they've shown us this year. Their defense is good enough to get the job done. But it was not good enough to get the job done in this game. It was not good enough to get the job done against the Cavs. In all, as, as Paolo 
Bancaro put it so eloquently after the game. We shot 32% from the floor, 32.6%. I'll give him that. I'll give him the 33. Um, 21 from the foul line, 21.6. Again, that's not shit from the three-point line. Let's not shave per percentage points there. And 63.3% from the line, missing 11 free throws. You're not going to win a lot of games playing that way. This was the worst field goal percentage the Magic have shot in any game this year. Yes, even worse than the Knicks game. And so, on one hand, it is good that the Magic still kind of had a chance to win this one in the end, but it also lays bare and tells us that this Magic team and their flaws and their weaknesses are going to be on full display throughout the season. Everything for the Magic offensively was hard in this one. Everything was difficult. Everything was a challenge. And while the Magic did do some good work to stay in the game and give themselves a chance to win it, they have to do more. They got to make shots. Like, I, like I, I, I get to it sometimes. And I wish there was something more complicated I could say. I wish I could tell you, oh, they got to run this pick and roll this way or they got to, you know, create this action or find this mismatch. They got to do X, Y, and Z. It's none of that. The Magic have to make shots. Now, I think the offense did get very stagnant in this game and more stagnant than it usually does. The Magic were sitting at like nine assists midway through the third quarter. And yeah, some of that's because they're missing a lot of shots, but a lot of that is because there's a lot of isolation, a lot of isolation play. Cleveland was able to kind of load up the paint, put three, four guys in the middle of the lane, prevent Paolo from getting downhill, prevent Jalen Suggs from getting downhill. And while Orlando found some success running uh, slips, slips on screens in, in the first quarter, um, those kind of dried up. The movement just wasn't there. And that makes it makes you get harder shots. That treat leads to turnovers. That leads to all those things. But it's all like a symbiotic relationship too where the Magic are finding it hard to get downhill and they're getting stuck because everyone else is not afraid of your shooters. This is the biggest problem that the Magic have. And if, you know, again, if they're, you know, I think I said this a million times in the podcast with Chris Manning of Locked On Cavs earlier this week, um, this, game, this series is going to come down to shooting. And the Magic missed so many of their shots. And Cleveland, they missed a lot of shots too. Orlando's defense was really good. We're going to talk about that in a minute here. Um, but Cleveland made enough shots to take the lead. They were able to get in the paint and get some space and find some ability to create opportunities to score. That's the advantage that Cleveland has in this series. Donovan Mitchell knows how to create, you know, create points. They got shooters that Orlando has to respect. And, you know, as Paolo Bancaro said after the game, some of the shooters the Magic wanted to shoot made shots. Evan Mobley, most specifically. You could see the Magic were happy to let Evan Mobley shoot threes, kept them out of the paint, allowed them to be more physical in the lane. He made some threes, especially early on in the game. He made some threes, and that was a huge factor in, in this game as well. But the Magic don't have that. They, they, you know, they're going to have a game where they shoot well. Like game three, probably they're going to shoot the ball well. They're going to, they're going to be in good shape. Um, when they get back to the Kia Center, they shoot a lot better in the Kia Center. They play a lot better offensively in the Kia Center. The Magic though have to find shooting. Like it, it, it it's they got to find. You know, we're going to talk more about that after the playoffs end. After the Magic are eliminated, we will talk about all the shooting options that the Magic are going to be chasing because they have to find shooting. It is the biggest weakness that this team has and is the weakness that we knew would come into full display once they reach the playoffs. The playoffs are here. Happening on the floor behind me, you can see the, the, the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse Jumbotron right over my right shoulder here telling you it's the playoffs if you're watching on YouTube. The Magic have to make shots. At the end of the day, that's what wins you games. Some shot making. And tonight, today, Cleveland made the shots, Orlando didn't, and sometimes it is truly as simple as that. The problem for the Magic moving forward, the problem for the rest of the series is you expect Cleveland to make shots. You don't expect Orlando to make shots. Despite those weaknesses on display, despite the Magic having their worst shooting performance of the season, the Magic still kind of had a chance to win this game. We'll talk about what the Magic did and what they can build on heading to Game 2. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. 
But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Yahoo Finance. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation, to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom, right? With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data, and tools that you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community of more than 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. Again, that's yahoofinance.com, yahoofinance.com. Today's episode of Locked on Magic is also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. The playoffs are here, if you, if you can't tell. The playoffs are here in the NBA, NHL, baseball across the street at Progressive Field is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day for the best coverage of the entire NBA playoffs. You want to check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel. It's a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed to you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming that you get from the national networks. You get the expert analysis, people like me who follow their teams religiously and know them inside and out. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. So, obviously game one did not go according to plan. A lot of things left on the board. A lot of things that we know the Magic have to clean up and things that the Magic frankly control. Got off to another bad start. They trailed by 12 early in the game. They ended up losing the first quarter by seven points. That set the tone for the whole game. They were climbing uphill the whole way and especially against this defense and we knew this Cavs defense was going to be very tough for the Magic offense. Against this defense, it's very tough for them to climb back up that hill. So Orlando was climbing uphill. Cleveland led The whole way through. Having said that, Orlando also missed 11 free throws. In a game you lose by 14, uh, going 19 for 30, Orlando did a great job putting pressure on the rim, getting getting to the foul line, missing all those free throws. In a game that was relatively close for a good chunk of the game, that kills you. It's, it's momentum. It's not necessarily like, oh, if the Magic made 11 free throws, it's now a three-point game. It's, well, if the Magic had made these two free throws in the third quarter, now it's a three-point game instead of a five-point game, and now that run that happens off of that free throw doesn't happen. It's, it's a momentum thing as much as anything else. So, uh, again, a lot of things within the Magic's control. And, and so if there is a bit of optimism, if there is a feeling among the Magic, and there's certainly that feeling after the game, if there's a feeling among the Magic that there, this series is still there for the taking, it's in that. It's in, yes, the Magic missed free throws, which is something they've done all year, by the way. Uh, still a major concern. Yes, the, the Magic had their worst shooting game of the year. That, that's, that's probably not going to happen again. I think it's more likely for that to happen again than maybe for Cleveland to miss 18 straight threes. But Orlando's defense stood tall. This was, you know, some people might be willing to say, oh, a 14-point loss in game one, that's, that's not a good sign, and it is. Don't get me wrong. Magic got a lot of work, have their work cut out for them here. But Orlando also should feel that they still have an opportunity, that they still have this ability to come back in this series because they showed a lot of fight in this series throughout. They showed a lot of fight in this game. Um, and it starts with their defense. Look. This team knows their offense isn't great. It's, you know, they may not care about this, but statistically they are the worst offense that made the postseason this year. Among the 20 teams that are in the postseason, they have the worst offense among all of them. So, uh, again, we know what this team needs to fix and where this team needs to go in the offseason. But Orlando knows that their 
butter is breaded on defense. They know that their defense is what's going to carry them forward and carry them through here throughout this series. And yes, they struggled early on. They gave up 33 points in that first quarter. Cleveland hit some tough shots. You know, they, they made some shots. They hit their first five threes of the game. Orlando shut them down the rest of the game. Like, it's pretty impressive that in a playoff game, the Magic held the Cavs to 40 points in the middle two quarters. In fact, they only had 64 points in the final three quarters. 64 points in three quarters. That's what, 21 points per quarter? That's going to win you basketball games. Now, we won't mention, but we will, the Magic only scored 32 points in those middle two quarters. They ended up winning the fourth quarter 25-24, so that wasn't necessarily a problem. They got a score to make good on their defense. I think it was, um, I think it was, uh, I remember seeing this on Twitter uh, from Seth Part now, that the Magic are wasting a great pitching performance because they, they can't give the pitcher run support. And, you know, it being baseball season, that is a great analogy for what the Magic did in this game. Having said that, trailing by as much as 15 in the first half, you know, down the entire game. Orlando was able to cut the deficit down to five in that third quarter. They they had a chance to take this game despite all the struggles that they've had. Cleveland is a good team, and Donovan Mitchell is a great player. He had a he had a really strong game in this one. He scored what, uh, look up, look up on my sheet here, 30 points. Um, uh, he scored 30 points in this game. Orlando, I thought, did a good job defensively, but he was able to kind of find space and get around guys and get to the basket. And, and that's going to be the challenge for the Magic's defenders now is how to slow him down. But Orlando showed their fight. Their defense is here to play. Their defense is going to be able to stand tall. And more impressively, their defense played this well when their offense did not show up. To me, that is the sign of maturity because usually... When you're, when you're not making shots, it's easy for your defense to deflate. Even a team like the Magic, who've been good defensively all year, your defense de tends to deflate when you're not hitting shots. Your, your offense tends to kind of carry your mood and carry your momentum. And, you know, Orlando's had games where that has been the case. They've had games where that's not been the case. In this moment, on this stage, in this environment, to still be on that grind, to still be uh, poised enough, to keep at it, to stay in the game despite the shots that weren't falling, good looks that weren't falling, bad looks that weren't falling, frustration maybe with some of the physicality that they that it took them a while to get used to. To stay in that, to me, that is a very encouraging sign. This team, they you know they may not win this series. We'll find out. We got we got a long way to go in this series. There's a long long battle ahead, and no one in that locker room is panicking. If there's one thing. One message that I can give you, well, I would say, like, look, this, and, and I obviously spent 10 minutes talking about it, like, this, this game showed us where the Magic's weak spots are and what they're going to need to improve to get to the level that they want to be at, and that's ultimately a championship level, but certainly a level where they're competing for home court advantage in the playoffs so they can host a game one like this at the Kia Center where they're really good. Um, it also showed us that this team is really poised. Um, you know, they they told us after the game that they believe they are still on the right track, that they believe they are still doing all the right things, that they have put themselves in a position to win these games. And if they play the way defensively that they played in this game, because they were physical, they stone stonewalled Cleveland throughout the game, they, they reached, they grabbed, you know, they got away with all the stuff you got to get away with in the playoffs. They force turnovers, 18 turnovers for 19 points. That's going to be a big factor for them to find some offense if they can keep producing turnovers like that. Um, they put a lot of pressure on Cleveland. And, and, and after that initial shock uh, early in the game, Orlando's defense was really the one controlling things. Now, Orlando couldn't score, and, and that remains the issue. We're going to keep bouncing back to that over and over and over again. Orlando's got to be able to score. they got to be able to make shots. they got to be able to create some space. But the Magic showed their fight. So... You know, yes, I'm going to sit here and tell you we know these flaws that the Magic have that they've got to improve on in the offseason. Flaws that are not present, that are not something you can fix on this roster. Like, plain and simple, these are not problems you can fix on this roster. You know, Gary Harris has to make a shot. Like, there's no one else. There's no one else that can do what he does and, and soak up the attention that he does as a shooter. Joe Ingles has got to make shots. Franz Wagner's got to make shots. Jalen Suggs has got to make shots. They got to make Cleveland be afraid of those shooters. That's 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 the that's the battle of the series, and, and, and you know, again, it, that's what it's all about. Because Orlando's defense is gonna do the job. 
there may be a bad defensive game coming down the road that, you know, it's a, it's a long series. You're allowed to make a few mistakes. Orlando's got one fewer mistake to make now than Cleveland. That's, that's all this game is. Um, the Magic showed their fight. They showed they are not afraid of the stage, that they will perform on this stage. Um, they are, they, they, you know, I was honestly very, very impressed of how they played in the playoffs and how they absorbed this pressure and absorbed all of this to put themselves in a position to win. The Magic, though, just got to do it. It's about execution at this point. It's about results. And while the Magic showed their fight and showed their poise and showed their maturity, they got to find a way to get the ball in the basket more than Cleveland does if they want to win these games. And unfortunately, they did leave a lot of that on the table. We'll go through the final box score, talk a little bit about some of the coaching decisions. We'll maybe save some of those for tomorrow as well. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals who are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, more than 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making that even simpler and quicker. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring, so why not you? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go through the final box scores. The Orlando Magic fall to the Cleveland Cavaliers 97 to 83 here on a Saturday afternoon at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Again, it simply, you know, we're going to go through it here. I've got my box score. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it right there. Um, the Magic have to make shots. It's just like so simple. It's the simplest thing to do, and it's just the thing that this team just hasn't done all year, and and, and it is what it is. Um, again, Orlando shoots 32.6% from the floor, 8 for 37. That's 21.6% from three. That is the 22nd game of the season where the Magic shoot less than 30% from three. Obviously not a very good record when they do that. 19 for 30 from the foul line. That's really the killer. 11 missed free throws in a game that you lose by 14. That is a nine-point game with about three, four minutes to play. Um, you know, it, it, that kind of stuff just prevents you from getting over the hump and getting in, you know, creating momentum. Like, that's a momentum stopper. A missed free throw is a momentum stopper. And you're obviously not always expecting to make all of them, but when you get to the line 30 times and you're leaving 11 points on the board, that's a killer, especially in these playoff games where every single possession matters. If that's the thing that the Magic have to learn the hard way, they should know that by now. They've, they're first in the league in free throw rate, but 26th, 25th in the league, 24th in the league in free throw percentage. That should shoot 75% from three, or from the free throw line. They shoot 75% from the foul line in this game. It's a completely different ball game. And so, again, it's as much as we want to talk about the poor three-point shooting, the poor outside shooting, and, and even the poor paint shooting, Orlando was 18 for 40 in the paint for 36 points. Again, a lot of those turned into fouls and turned into free throws. Um, so, again, you got to win the paint. Magic didn't do that. Big factor in this game. Jared Allen played some great defense, especially early as the Magic were trying to just kind of test him out a little bit. I thought Evan Mobley played some great defense as well. Um, you know, Cleveland's a good defensive team, so it's not like we're expecting Orlando to be offensive juggernauts here, but they just got to be a little bit better than that. You know, averaging sub, averaging sub .75 points per possession on on half-court offense as the lights dim on me here in Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse is not so good. So let's run through these stats real fast for you. Um, Paolo Bancaro leads the Magic with 24 points, 9 for 17 shooting. Absolutely love the way that he, really love the way that he played. He was aggressive. Uh, without being too aggressive at times, he was looking to get others involved, which explains five assists. It also explains nine turnovers, where you know that was a real struggle for him. Um, and and look, a lot of those were some of the ball just getting away from him a little bit. Cleveland was very good at trapping him and putting him into small spaces. He's got to tighten up that handle. Some of it was he was trying to make a play and the play wasn't there. You know, Cleveland again just does such a good job clogging the lane. Paolo was was in some really tight spaces and again just just a major struggle. 
for them. Franz Wagner, 18 points, 7 for 15, for 15 shooting. He was 3 for his first 10 shots, though really struggled through the first three quarters. That was somewhat expected with Mobley likely guarding him, but Franz has got to be a little bit more assertive looking for a shot. He, you know, He's trying to get to, to the lane again. Just very few driving lanes for this Magic team throughout the course of the game. Um, that was a huge factor uh, in this one. And again, Franz just couldn't quite get over the hump for him. Just couldn't quite make things happen. He shot two for six from three. So again, you, you, we're going to go through these three-point numbers. Just a lot of guys that the Magic need to have hit threes didn't make enough threes. And so maybe that flips game two. Maybe that doesn't. Um, Jonathan Isaac, 10 points, got the surprise start in this one. We'll talk, I think we'll talk more about this tomorrow and some of the coaching decisions that Jamal Mosley made. I, as much as I think it's really good to have as many Jonathan Isaac minutes as possible, he did not have a good defensive game in this one. Um, he was trying to chase blocks. Uh, and again, they got the magic a little bit into, into scramble mode and, and that put them in some bad spots and put Isaac in compromising spots. He was chasing blocks instead of just being a presence, being big, waiting for the guard to recover and staying in contact with Jared Allen. A lot of dump downs to the dunker spot, to Allen, to Mobley. Just a, a really tough game on that front. Um, I, Wendell Carter was not a factor in this game either, so I don't think he's necessarily the answer. But I do think that starting Isaac disrupted the bench flow. And I think that's honestly, if, if you're going to go to a nine-man rotation, or stick to your ten-man rotation, which might be a mistake too, I think messing up that bench flow was really, really harmful. But the bench did not do its job, did not get the Magic back into the game like they normally do in these kind of games. The starters lifted them up in the third quarter, got the Magic back in this game, but um, usually the Magic rely on that bench to kind of get them back into games, and, and that just, again, that just didn't happen. The way things usually go in the regular season didn't happen in this game. And I think just a late rotation change like this where, you know, you're playing lineups that you're not used to playing. You know, it's Cole, Markel, Joe Ingles, Mo Wagner, Wendell Carter, I think you're, I, I, I don't think those lineups mesh well. And I think, I think you, you know, again, the, the motto for this week has been do what you do, but do it better. I don't think you're necessarily putting the Magic in a position to do things better um, with that bench group. I, I think we'll, 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 ta we'll chat a little bit more about some of the coaching decisions Jamal Mosley made. I think on tomorrow's episode, I want to stick a little bit more to the box score here. Um, just preview my thoughts on that. I, you know, maybe it'll work. I, you know, I think I think they'll review the tape and figure out if that's something to, to work on and something that needs to be adjusted. But I, my preference would be, I think, going back to Wendell Carter at center. And it's not so much the Jared Allen thing that I was initially concerned about, um, you know, with Isaac guarding Allen in the post a little bit more. But I, I just think it just balances the, balances the team a little bit better. And I think that's more important because, again, the bench is a major advantage of Magic Capital. Under only outscored Cleveland 18-14 to 14 off the bench. You know, you look at the bench scores, uh, Joe Ingles 0 for 2, Wendell Carter 1 for 3, Cole Anthony 0 for 7, Markel Fultz 0 for 4, Mo Wagner 4 for 8, 10 points. Mo Wagner brought some really good energy, especially that second quarter when he got under uh, some Cavs players' skin. Um, but again, just the bench just wasn't what it usually is for this team, and that's, that's a really big factor in this series, especially if the Magic are going to stick to a 10-man rotation and, and not kind of stretch... Uh, Paolo and Franz's minutes a little bit. You know, Paolo played 41-15, so he's playing playoff minutes now. Franz played 37 and a half. They're they're playing playoff minutes now, so so those guys are going to get their time. But you know, we had a two three minute stretch where neither of them were on the floor. That that simply can't happen anymore. Jalen Suggs, 13 points, four for 16 shooting, one for seven from three. A tough shooting day for him. If he shoots a little bit better, this game's very different. Um, so again, it's just about making shots. You know, you know. Paolo Bancaro said it after the game, you know, some of the guys that the Magic wanted to make to take threes made their threes, some of the, and again, the guys the Magic needed to make their threes didn't make their threes. If that's the difference in the game, you can live with that as I am now completely in the dark here on YouTube. So I will close things out. The Orlando Magic fall to the Cleveland Cavaliers 97 to 83 from a darkened rocket mortgage field house. I want to thank you all for joining me for today's episode of Lockdown Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in. Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of the signal podcasts to your podcast and able listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can find us there on Twitter at O Magic Daily. And be sure to check out my Patreon page, your Line Magic Hub. I'm going to do a breakdown of plays from game one that I found interesting uh, and some things to look at as we prepare for game two. You can find that at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. And as always, thank you for your support. From a darkened Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, that's going to do it for me today. From game one for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Philip Rossman Reich. We will see you all again tomorrow for another episode of Locked on Magic.